So today, uh, my contact, everyone, I would like to share with my heart. I will try to be in time, not over time. My wife will look after that. <laughs> but I will share my soul. I will share uh, my spirit. Uh, a great research that uh, God led me. I think it's God. I believe it's God. And I would like to introduce with uh, uh, 1 Chronicles 12. It's a long chapter. I will not read everything because uh, it will be the only sermon I do. But the context is this. It's the death of Saul, Saul and David that was to be made king. You know, Saul always saved David, and David was the first, was uh, uh, outcast, and suddenly Saul died, and the people said, oh, that's the will of God that David will be our king. And some people gathered together, and they said, let's make David our king. I will read verse 23 and 32 of all the chapters. Verse 23. Now these were the numbers of the division that were equipped for war. And King David at Hebron to turn over the kingdom of Saul to him. According to the word of the Lord. According to the word of the Lord. So this, this, this part describes that all warriors, clan came, and among them, verse 18, among all the clans, all the warriors that came, have this clan, that these warriors of the son of Isashar, who has understanding of the times. That's my title. Who has understanding of the times. To know what Israel of their chiefs were 200, and all their women were all were at their coming. Did you catch it? All their women were at their coming. Why? Because they 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 discern, they, they understand the signs. If we understand the signs, we will be the leader of the nation. And I'm really happy to talk with a young generation here because you will be the, you are the leader of this generation. You have to understand the coming. Today I wish that my message will get you hungry. I will I will show some bomb in your mind. You have to search if what I say is true or not. I I will share what I believe, but it's your responsibility to, to search the word of God to see what if what I, if I say makes sense. So my aim is really to make you hungry this morning. So I will not make a Bible study, but I will show things <laughs> that I wish would blow up your mind. Your mind. I want you to be closer to God and be courteous to the same God's will for the time we are in. The kingdom of God has to come. What did he say to pray? Thy kingdom come. We are like the kind of Saul. We need Jesus to be king. We are tired of Saul. We want Jesus to be king in our world. Thy kingdom come. In March 2020, one year and so ago, when they, 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 they make the lockdown, the first lockdown, you know, in March, they, they announced, okay, we, we have this virus coming and we will lock down everyone. It's the first time in the history of the we do that. I was moved mostly of the time after a day because uh, we stopped the church and stopped everything. So I was mostly watching Netflix and hockey. I'm guilty, you know, to kill the time. Suddenly, not suddenly, but after a few times, the spirit was bugging me. I knew that. But one day, the Holy Spirit really said to me, Hey, you spend too much time on TV. Take time searching me. I knew he was quite right. I knew it. 
Then I started to pray more and went to the and I started to pray to read books and to read the Bible and read the scriptures for God. And I had many great times and deeper prayer times. And one day I was praying, I don't know for what, I was just praying, I like to pray like this. And when I pray, I just do like this and I pray. I wish to tell you, Lord, I think so. <laughs> so I was praying and I. It happened many times in my life. I was praying and just suddenly, out of nowhere, a word came in my mind. This word. When you see the abomination of the desolation. It got my attention. So I stopped praying and said, what's in the Bible? I said, no, I think it, I suspect it's like this one before. So I went to there and started reading my story before. And verse 15, I found these words, these exact words that came in my mind. It really triggered my curiosity big time. So, my point in this message would be put aside, aside some of your artificial entertainment and deep into God's word and what is really going on around you. We can take so much time in this that make things like that that we forget what's happening now. Mm. I said that. In other words, guys, it has a real game you can play and be part of. Right now in the spiritual and real period, and it's fascinating, a game outside of this, the real game you can be part of. It's what I want to share with you. 1 Chronicles 12, 32 says, Of the son of Isashar, who has understanding of the time to know what Israel ought to do. Do we as Christians have an understanding of what is going on in the world and know what we ought to do? If I don't know what's going on, I don't know what I have to do. If I know what's going on, I can ignore it and say, just oh, I will always oh, play another game. I will go to Facebook, I will go to Instagram. This is really important because we may be called to lead some people to some great deception times. Jesus talked about that. Like never we've seen before. Jesus said at the end we'll have this a deception that even the elect can be seduced in this season. Those who know the, the word of God, they cannot be seduced. Jesus is careful. Said, be careful. Hosea 4 6. My people is destroyed by. Oh, you know this one. That's good. I will read it for you. Because you have rejected knowledge or you have ignored, I also reject you as my priest, my leader. Because you have ignored the law of your God, I will also ignore your children. The context is clear. We must seek God's will and knowledge of what is happening around us in our fair and influence because we have to be God's image bearer. We have to represent Him. So we, we need to know Him and what is going on to represent Him. Romans 12, 2. We read Romans 12, 1 this morning. I have heard 2. Let it ring. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not come from the passion of this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. I relate personally with a quote from a, a, a guy called Watchman Lee. It's not his real name, but it's a great author, a great Christian author. And I read most of his book and his book. He read 1929 to 1914. What's happening in this time? What's really hard time in the year? What's the second word in the world? He 
missed it. He talks about the old and the in the Bible. And he says this. The genuine word is no longer appropriate. The children of God lack vision. They do not know the gravity and intensity of the situation. It is no longer enough to be a good servant of, love, of the Lord. We live in a very special time, which therefore demands particular Christians doing a special work. We live in a very privileged time. We can do what is really useful for God. Life will show us the way, but strength and power will allow us to follow the way. You have to pay a high price to be useful today. This word, when I read it many times ago, really I felt crying for the Lord. I said, wow, that's powerful. I want to be part of this order of the I want to be part of the one who will make, who will be useful for God in this time. And I believe he meant a swing by, and the power by the Holy Spirit, by his voice, his presence in our life, and his guidance in everything we do. The children of God lack vision. They do not know the gravity and intensity of the situation. Revelation 3, verse 14, 22, you know the, 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 the church of Lebanon, 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 the last church in the Revelation, this rich and personalist church, but not warm and blind church. Jesus says to her, and I know your eyes, I thought that you may see. As me, as I love, I renew and chasten. Therefore, be sealed and repent. Be diligent and turn from your indifference. Oh, your indifference. Because you ignore what is happening. You have no power when you ignore what's happening. And Satan doesn't want you to be a victim. He wants to. Church, Christian, we cannot just live a nice and selfish life in you. We need to discern, like Issachar, Issachar's son, who had understanding of the time to know what we ought to do, what we should do. What is the Holy Spirit asked to you, to me, to Pastor, to Vivian, to Victoria, what we have to do in this particular time, each one of us. When I receive these words, when you see the abomination of the salvation, I had two Bible colors, one in French and one in English. I knew that it was about the temple defied by a big sacrifice on the altar on the unsecretive plan before, even before Jesus came. But in prayer, I was really speaking by this, this word. And I was really speaking to understand what does what it mean for me now? Why do you give me this word, this exact word, love? What it means for me today. And I realized that the temple of God, since Jesus Christ came, died, and rise, rise again, who is the temple of God in you? That's you. That's our body, our soul, our spirit. It's us. It's the human being. Human being. We are the temple of God, according to Paul. In 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. Strong words. Heavy words. Heavy words. I would like to share a bit of what this encounter with the Word of God, with the Holy Spirit, Talk to me since March 2020. When you see the abomination of the revolution, it led me to some great research that I did. First of all, 
It was the beginning of COVID, so I, I believe that it's a little bit inspiring. At that time, I suspected that it may be manipulated by men. Now, more and more, see the news. I don't know if the news talk about that, but even Facebook will not anymore uh, censor this theory because they, have, they found out that it was manipulated. Who in the not to the country? It was my, my suspicion, and now it's totally very good. And I, I, was, I, I, I still think that it, it may be hiding an evil agenda in some way. You would be careful with it. Second one. I found out that the technology and the strategies for mass surveillance and control already exist. Plans are unfolding as you speak at great pace in most, in most nations, and you can easily guess where it can lead. Revelation 13 verse 16 says, He required everyone. And I he says, it also forced all people. ESV says, also it causes all. Small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark in the right hand and in the forehead. Or in the forehead. Did you realize he required everyone? It also forced, it can be translated, can be translated, it causes all. So as for a, a, a great choice, I'm not sure. <laughs> it will be. Somehow forced. Somehow you have to. But for the rest, I let you discern from your own. My main point is this one. Not my main point. I will not talk about COVID. Don't be worried about it. But it triggers something inside of me. The time we are living right now. My main point, my main research was about a research I did four years ago five years prior about the DNA. What is the DNA? It's the blueprint of life. Every life. It's the blueprint of God. Before you build any building, you have a blueprint. Every detail is in the blueprint. And the, 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 the one who comes it will follow the every detail of the blueprint. You have a problem with the construction, you put the blueprint. It's every information of everyone, every creature living in the earth. It's the DNA. If we change the DNA, especially human DNA, do we have a, a different creator? That's the question I ask myself. Dr. Tal Sachs, I don't know if you know who he is. I will not say it right away. He says this, we are actually happy in the software of life. He says that, I will repeat, we are actually happy in the software of life. He talks about the issue. That means it's changing the way we think about prevention and the treatment of all the diseases. During a talk, TED talk in 2017, who is uh, the third top of that? Is the CEO of the movie. And uh, it's pushing to, to make some research and analysis. That's what all system things is for me to find things. You know, when you, you play a uh, hide and seek, you have a, a clue, uh, clue, and uh, I do I hear the voice, but he's there, I hear the shirt, you know. And I thought that we need to dig in the Bible, dig in the uh, theology, dig in what's happening in the world. And I find out last time humans and angels, I believe, met with DNA. God has no laws of judgment. I will explain what I mean. But Jesus said this in Matthew 24. But as the days of Noah were, were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. 
I believe that the Lord will be with you. Most of the time, prophecy has the Lord will be with you. Yes, we don't know what happens. We move to happen. That's the first thing. Right? Uh, in Matthew 24, Luke 17, and Mark 13, about Noah, about lust. The people didn't have a clue of the deep deception they were casting. They just followed the influence of these mighty ones, the influence, influences of their time, and get around there with their ways and finally be part of the kingdom of God. If you read Genesis 1, uh, Genesis 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, Genesis 6 has something we don't read often in Genesis 6, 1 to 4, because it's a phrase. Oh, what is it? It's hard. I will show you that. But before we go there, I would like to, to quote a teacher in my first Bible college. He is in really Pastor Not Confidence. He says this. In 1997, he still proves this. He says, by dint of seeing everything, we end up accepting everything. By dint of accepting everything, we end up approving everything. This is the generation we are living in right now. We see so many things, we just say, oh, it's okay. And we approve it, and we, we're doing it. We are deceived. You should know. Satan has a plan and is working day and night to get it done. If you see him, that's the thing. He wants to sit down and deceive even the elect. Who is the elect? It's possible. Ephesians 6 12. What says Ephesians 6 12? For we don't have to, to, to fight against each other, but against the spirit. The, the, the rulers, the authorities in the heaven, in the, the, the realm. 2 Corinthians 11 14. Is this what he says that Satan uh, himself mastering as an angel of life. And what is the context? Paul is saying that. He's saying that all apostles. All teachers and infiltrated among the church, the true church. John fight against that. Peter fight against that. James, uh, Jude, Paul. They were in the church. Because Satan disguised as a region of life. Oh, that's not so bad. Don't be jealous. Hey, he did it to his first. He can be like God. Remember the story? He was in a lot of trouble. People who were uh, in the we need the Holy Spirit in a close relationship with God and Jesus Christ. That only the Holy Spirit will guide us, teach us according to the truth. You know, I, 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 I shared that yesterday in the Bible, or Bible sharing in Kuma. It's it seemed really strong this week as I was reading. Hell was not originally created for humans. But why is hell was created? For the covetous sons of God who fell. Who covetous their way and covetous human way. Well, hell was created for them. If we end up in hell, it's because we follow them. If we follow them, it's because we are deceived. Yes. Hello, we you see that the past day. I came to believe the context of Noah's time was a great point to look at. Two important things to consider the context among around God's judgment at Noah's time. 
the sons of God, the angels, had intercourse with the womb. No, 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 okay. Bye bye. <laughs> it's what my Bible says. Oh, it was the son of Cain. Okay. It's not the Bible, what the Bible says. I don't have time to go into detail. But as it says that the little that means the fallen one, the angel, the sons of God. The sons of God are the first creatures of God. Before he created humans, God created already some creatures. Had an offspring. June 6. June 6, I don't have a chapter because I have only one chapter. June verse 6 talks about the angels who left their domain. It's the same word that he used to talk about our glorified body in one, one Corinthians 15. The, the glorified body that Jesus had after his resurrection, the angel body, the, the, not the angel, but the, the spiritual body, the glorified body, they left this body to take a human form. We see the Bible, many angels put a human form. And they had intercourse with the human. If I take the DNA of an angel with the DNA of a human, what I have? A shimmer. Something that never existed before. The offspring of that, the God didn't create it, and it is intended to be because it was forbidden by God. I had a chimera. You know chimera? Chimera. 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 That's French. Why do you think the whole testament, Leviticus is the law, says do not make two seeds, do not make two animal races, do not make two animal animals? Why do you God say that to the people? In Canaan, they found a cluster of grace so large that it took two men to carry it. Is that normal? No. Something has been changed. In the same chapter, and there, and there they saw the Nephilim, and plus the, the altar, it's in a, like this, and then he says, he, he explains, the son of Anak, who come from the Nephilim, oh, the offspring of the Nephilim, the son of Anak, we saw them, they are, they are strong, they are, we are like a grasshopper beside them. God commanded Joshua to destroy his particular people. It seems harsh in the Bible, you have to kill everyone, even the kids. But God wanted not all the humans, but this of me to be my own. It makes sense, huh? When we look at that, it starts to make sense. God didn't, did not create the offspring of the little they were not meant to exist. Their seed, though, still exists until now. When Jesus said to the Pharisees, race of vipers, my second point of that about Genesis, I believe Genesis 6, verse 9, stands to differentiate Noah's lineage from the Nephilim lineage. It says, Noah was a righteous man. Righteous man, the word in Hebrew talks about his character, his moral, his walk with God. He was a good, uh, a good Christian. <laughs> okay? He was faithful to God. And it continues, he was a righteous man, one blameless among men at this time on earth. What means blameless? The word is study him, tell him, tell me, in his room. It means he was complete, whole, entire, sound. It talks about his humanity. He was not mixed. He was sound. He was blameless. It's the same word they 
he used when he checked for the, 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 the land, and he, he checked it as a default. Oh, no, he's blameless. He's pure, sound for sacrifice. He's pure. It's the word used for no one. In a nutshell, meaning that he was pure human, he didn't think he and he was still pure human. What I believe, you have to make your own assessment in that. The same way I just said it. That is why Genesis 5, just before, talked about the genealogy. When the Bible gives a genealogy, such a boring part, it has a, a way to go. And the genealogy starts, God created Adam in his image. And Adam created, uh, had a, uh, a son set in his image. And after the, the, the flood, God said to Noah, I created you in my image, so go and multiply the earth. Multiply my image, the human image. Why did you say so much to the resemblance of God? Adam, Seth, Noah, and to release on earth? Because there is this is thing, talk about the seed of Satan against the seed of Eve. That's the great battle. That's the, the great battle that still now is going on in here. How we go where I want to go. Could, I don't know if you heard about this word, I, I, I think so. Could transhumanism, meaning the biotechnology, DNA alteration, cyborgs, it's human and machine mixed together, be an abomination in the temple of God? Is it an abomination to transform human creation, especially human? We already did that with the sea, we already did that with the animal. But if we go up to changing the blueprint of God's creation, the top of the creation of God, then is it an abomination? Genesis, I, I strongly believe, yes, we get that. Genesis 11, verse 6 is the second judgment God sent to the earth after the, the flood. And the humans go together and they said, we will get a, a mountain that reaches the heavens. What's their goal? We want to be in relationship again with this creation, with this literally, with the sons of God. And we'll get rid of God and we'll be God ourselves with them as our ancestors before. And what God said, we look down and say, oh no, again? Check verse 6. And the Lord said, In you the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin, they begin to do. They said the beginning. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. I no limit of what they do. I have to do me because the say of the human. And he enjoyed me, and we scatter around the world, not able to talk to each other. What, what happened right now? I'm a French, speaking in English, please know. Hmm. <laughs> One language. The biophysical law was passed during the night, in last July. The abortion law that until nine months, we can abort and use the baby, use the business for Jesus. The new gender law is passing as we speak. Did you see certain certain lines in the last video where she just and all the babies are going to It's dodge. It's dodge. After putting God out of our institution, I don't know where it is, but in Canada we removed the we remove God from our school, from anywhere, from the code of law, anywhere. These new laws should alarm and alert Christians. Where are our voices? I don't hear much voices from Christians. 
scientists have already been animal and vegetal DNA to human DNA. Chicken DNA have a mouth with a, a human ear, have speak with a human heart and the, 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 the same um, internal organs we have. Oh, they said, oh, to cure cancer, to cure people. But we have to assimilate. I think. They now have found, since a few years ago, the scientific work has now achieved an easy way of modifying the disease called CRISPR-9. And for medical or genetic enhancement, it can change your DNA like that. It's called the R -R -R mRNA technology. You can just cut your DNA and put some an information, hacking the software of life. What you need. Why are we right now to use this technology? This new technology injection as a global experiment on humans. It's never been done before, never. And the, those who are doing that have a, they sign, they make the, the, the country sign a zero responsibility. If it happens something, we are not responsible. We don't see that. Why? It intrigues me and I'm praying on that. I don't have all the answers, but I'm really in prayer. Really in prayer about that. I would like to finish with the transhumanism. Who knows new religions? Elon Musk. No? <laughs> Elon Musk is the guy who uh, pays it to go in the, uh, in the space. And Tesla. Tesla. And he has his company, and one of his company is New Orleans. He is now developing a chip that they will put in your brain. That will connect to your neuron and you will be able to communicate with the computer with your phone and with one is another. It's in their brain. Anyway, I was thinking you know that <laughs> you have something to say. So normally I know gel. Research that. I know gel. What is this? Nanotechnology. Beyond cryptocurrency. Did you heard about that? The bio cryptocurrency is inserted inside your body and work is activated by your body activity and it's passing in this right now by you know who. It's really, it's all in the way to be achieved and implemented. AI, symbio, AI, you know what is AI? Artificial intelligence. I mean, our phone now, with the new one, you buy a phone for the young and they talk about AI and, and the phone and things like that. They try to send views with human body and mind. And finally, I was shocked to realize how many kids are kidnapped or breeded are victims of human trafficking each year. In the U.S. only, between 600 and 800 kids. 608,000 kids, 1,000 kids are breeding or just kidnapped for the human trafficking, according to the International Tribunal for Natural Justice. In, in the world, it's 3 to 4 million kids. People are paid to have kids, and they take the kids, no birth certificate, nothing. Nobody knows. And they use it for sacrifice. Satanic ritual. When, when I found that, I tried for weeks in prayer at my wife. I was shocked. I was troubled. I knew that it, it made this, but it's real now. And why did you do that? To summon this sons of God to come back. Because they cannot come here. We have the authority on earth. We have to invite them. Sorry, I'm emotional on this one. We we have to be aware about that. Since I'm aware about that, I pray for that as well. Before I didn't pray for that, I didn't know. Or maybe I didn't want to know. It's disturbing to know that. 
I suspect strongly these are the root plan of Satan's wanting to overthrow God's creation and being God over you. We are back to Genesis 3. Do you read to see humans to become God and immortal who has his own image bearer? He wants us to bear his image, not God's image. He's the, the, the great deception, he's the, he's the base of life of Satan, the father of life. As 1 John 5, Mark 19 says, the whole world is under the influence and the power of Satan. But we are under the influence and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Don't you know? Are you well sitting? Sitting? Don't you know that the Vatican, who knows what is the Vatican? No? The, 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 the Catholic Church. Uh, in association with NASA, has a telescope named Lucifer. Who knows that? That's true. You, you laugh, but it's true. They changed the name, though, in 2012, because it was a little bit bad. They changed it for Lucy. But the, the original name was Lucifer. And what is their, 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 when you do that, you have a goal. What is their goal? Searching, searching and seeking to welcome extraterrestrial life. Make research. Dr. Tom Horn, Pastor, Pastor Tom Horn, Vatican Lucifer, uh, Teresa. It will be amazing. Why are they searching for extraterrestrial life? I don't think it's from another planet, I think it's from another dimension. It's the Son of God that wants, they want them to welcome them. Like they did in the Tower of Babel, when they, like they did in Jerusalem. I would like to introduce you to a guy. I will talk briefly on transhumanism and civil world. They are the most important domain of research right now. And many are concerned where it can be. Some people are afraid of that. Among them is Elon Musk. He knows what's happening and steps out. But he can go to us. As an example, Sanctuary AI is a non for profit It's a for profit company that works to create super AI aligned with human life and has the same goal as us. Their vision to work with good AI. They want to, and Rudy Rhodes says this, if you are able to make machines that are like people, image, um, in an essential way, the goal is to create things that are undistinguishable from humans. Think of it as deriving the angel better nature and this spirit into an AI whose soul are aligned to things that are generally things, things are good and not things that we, we will not agree on because he says they will be much better than us at what they do. He's the, the founder of the, the first quantum computer. They now have a quantum computer, AI computer, really powerful. And he talked in a South TED talk in 2015 about quantum computers. He said, we may open a communication with parallel universes. Elon Musk said this. I will just go past that. Elon Musk said, it's like you know the guy with the with the film that ran and with the holy water and he summoned the demons. And he, he, he thinks that with the holy water he will contain the demons in the film that ran. And Elon Musk said it doesn't work that way. We cannot contain this. So we are summoning things that we will not be able to control. It's what they think they are. And that's why he wants to instead human to be able to fight with them. That's his goal. I have a, a really good news for you. It's not all that news. For us believers in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the first one of many, and we will be the others, who become immortal as first example of what we will be. We will be immortal. We will be superhuman, spiritual, and human bodies 2.0, like Jesus. 
we will see a situation. What's happening right now is the great deception. It's a great seduction to the human race, and the people will believe that. They will say religion is cast away. We have a new religion. But we know, we must know what's happening. And know that Jesus has the final word. <laughs> who knows who's going to be? It's us. But what will be the cool of the world's armies? We have to be ready, brothers and sisters. I believe we are doing a time that we have to, to seek God's word and pray the Holy Spirit, what is going on around me? Before to take a decision, what should I do, God, with this? You take the lunch. Is it from you? Is it harmful for me? Where it come from? Where it goes? Ask questions. Don't follow just the world. The Bible says, don't follow the world. Bring yourself in Christ. God wants to give you in powerful ways. Let the Holy Spirit fail and move through you. And I would like to finish with this. If someone here doesn't know Jesus Christ as a Savior, and you are sober, what I said, get with you into the arch. Go in the arch as Jesus. Believe in Him. And all these things are nothing. Nothing when we are in Jesus Christ. You don't have to fear that. You already have victory. So if you want to accept Jesus, come and see the pastor, see the other pastor here, and ask, how can I have Jesus in my life? And Jesus will turn from you, and all these promises are for you. Amen? Thank you.